I'll start with um, who I am, a bit of how I got into this industry and uh, what I've been doing so far. So um, I currently work for Tarmac. Please buy your asphalt, not FM Conways. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I've been with Tarmac for about three and a half years. I've, uh, I've moved roles a couple of times, but it's been, um, it's been quite, um, quite good. But I'll, um, I'll go into detail lately. I first, um, I wanted to talk about how I got into the industry. It all started when I was um, sort of about this height and um, there was this massive spaghetti, spaghetti junction near my city and I remember going through it, driving past it with, um, well, obviously I wasn't driving, my parents were driving and um, I remember thinking, God, this looks so complicated. How do, you, how do you know where to go? How do you know which exit will take you where and, and how does it all connect? Uh, so that sort of started spiking um, the sort of things I wanted to get into, um, to understand things that looked quite complicated, but that then made a lot of logic once you got into them. When I was about 17, um, I the Spanish, um, maybe you haven't noticed because I've got a greater black country accent, but um, <laughs> I, uh, I grew up in Spain and I moved to the UK when I was 18. So while I was still in school, uh, we had these careers advice and all that, and um, they suggested that I went for architecture. But I thought, well, that's nice, but that's not enough. That I want to, I want to know how things work. Not just, I don't just want to design nice things. I want to know how it all works together. So I decided, well, I'll, I'll go into engineering. That sounds um, easy, fun, very achievable. It was achievable. It was fun as well, but it wasn't very easy. Um, at the time, I was also um, taking extra um, English lessons and um, the um, director of the learning center I was in, she, um, she was Irish and she suggested um, going to university in the UK, which um, I come from a really small town, so it was quite, of a, quite, a, quite, quite some thinking outside the box. My mom loved the idea, my dad hated it. But uh, you know how this works, the woman uh, gets away with things. So um, I moved to the UK to start uh, to study. I went to Liverpool for four years and I did uh, civil engineering. I remember um, going to my first lecture and I didn't understand a single word. I mean, you go to Liverpool now, you're British, you go to Liverpool <laughs> and it's so complicated. It's so still really complicated to understand. So imagine me that my English was poor and I just, I wasn't sure what I was doing. But um, I pushed through it and um, I carried on going to lectures. It started getting a bit easier, believe it or not. And um, after a while, you know, the end of the year came and the exams went well and it was like, well, I could do this. I could stay here and uh, stay for longer. My English was getting way better. My, my grades were good, so I carried on. A couple of things that happened that were quite funny, well, funny, that happened while I was in university is, um, obviously engineering is a, is a very male-dominated um, industry. I mean, in this room, there are four women. So, you know. Um, so I remember, one of the things I remember the most is I was in, while I was in university, a guy I was studying with, came to me and said, oh, you know, for being a girl and for being foreign, you're doing really good. And I said, oh, thank you very much. So while I was thinking, bloody hell, <laughs> <laughs> you're really rude, aren't you? But um, he thought it was a compliment. So there you go, a bit of um, male thinking for you. But after that, I pushed through that and then uh, managed to finish and uh, move into professional work. And I thought, oh, this is gonna be, it's going to be great. And, you know, we're all adults here now. We, um, everybody has been working with everybody and um, you've been more exposed, um, more mature and all that. But you still find the same things. You go to site and you're the youngest person there. And uh, you find this, um, this guy that has been on site for 30 years, and when you ask to go to the toilet, he takes you, he, he points you to where the toilet is. You go in there, and the toilet is disgusting. And uh, there are some writings on the wall, and they're not the sort of writings that, you know, say, have a nice day. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not that. So when you come out and you say to him, it's a bit, it's a bit gross in there, isn't it? He says, oh, 
we haven't seen a woman in 30 years here in this place. Like, all right, that's a great standard. Um, some of the times I've um, I've been to the um, to some sites where um, they've kept uh, they've kept the women's toilet locked, so the guys won't go into it because it's cleaner. Because <laughs> less people use it. <laughs> but um, other than that, one of the one of the things I really like about um, about working in this industry is I get to go to meetings where I'm usually the only woman there, and I'm there. I'm like 10, 10, 15 years younger than the, um, than the next, next youngest person. And I still get to sit there and, and to tell things and to express what I know. So that's quite reassuring. Um, so I'll explain a bit what I do. Um, um, as I said, I work for Tarmac. I'm a design support technologist, which probably doesn't mean anything to any of you. It's just some words. I'm a materials specialist, effectively. So um, I know a lot about aggregates, I know a lot about asphalt, and I know a lot about, um, about cementitious base and foundations for roads. And if you catch me in a good day, I know a lot about bitumen rheology. I also deal with, um, with a lot of quality and standards, and that, that's the boring part about my job. I'm sure you don't want to hear about that. So some of the things I do aside, it's... Um, because I found it so challenging to, to get into this industry, I, um, I do STEM activities, um, which I think um, is, is fairly common for young professionals to go and do because we come out of university and we are very, um, we're full of energy. We still don't have many commitments back home, so we can spare the time. So we all go into schools and talk to kids and, and try to inspire them to be better. So um, some of the things I do, well, most of the things I do, um, are about going to schools where there are um, girls only schools and then you stand there and you talk to them about this this strange world where they don't want to go to they don't want to get into this sort of industry but you, you you show them that there's more to it there's not just you know the construction industry is not just your your four builders in the road uh, or or you know this stereotype of, of um, and excuse me for this, fat, smelly men just um, <laughs> laying bricks. It's not just that. There's so much more to it. So I go and I do a bit of that. And um, I'm also um, a strong representative in the CIHD West Midlands region. So um, I sit on both of their committees. Um, I'm on the Young Professionals Committee because I still classify as young. Um, and I'm also on their main committee helping organizing the regional events. And as part of, well, not as part, but linked to that, um, earlier this year, I was featured on an exhibition we did in Birmingham in the Think Tank Museum about a woman in the transportation industry to try to, again, to try to encourage little human beings to, um, to open their mind. And um, also, I, um, I won a regional award uh, for Young Professional of the Year um, earlier this year but not the national one. I was just shortlisted for that. <laughs> not good enough. <laughs> um, so a bit of advice for, uh, for people that want to um, get into this industry. I think, um, I think you all are fairly senior, but a bit of advice for younger ones. <laughs> you need to persevere. You can't... Um, just because you go to a meeting and you feel very insecure about what you know and what you don't know and about how different you look either because of you're your younger or you're older or, or you're not of the same sex or, or what not, uh, you need to still speak out and, and be very confident on your own knowledge and just make a voice for yourself. <laughs>